When Garrett Peterson was born, he could barely breathe. He was born with an abnormal heart. His pulmonary valve was missing. This put tremendous pressure on his lungs, which caused his airways to collapse. His parents had to endure watching him go from a healthy baby boy to turning blue in the face. They rushed him to the hospital where nurses had to perform CPR on him every single day. Doctors, meanwhile, were running out of options. In a last ditch effort, Peterson's parents and caregivers reached out to an engineer and a doctor at the University of Michigan who had cured an infant with a similar condition before. Together, they took a CT scan of Garrett's lungs and using this information, they created a splint that would fit inside of his body. They took the splint and they created it out of a biological material on a 3D printer. In an eight hour surgery, doctors took the splint and implanted it into Peterson. Eight hours later, when he awoke, they opened his airways for the first time. He took his first consistent breaths, and he's been improving ever since. Contrary to popular belief, 3D printers have actually been around for a really long time. They're first invented in 1989 by an individual named S. Scott Crump, who went on to found one of the largest 3D printing companies in the world, Stratasys. The technology he created is actually very simple. But before we can get to 3D printers, we need to see how 3D models start their life. They start in a program like this. Uh, many of you might recognize this, uh, but for those of you that, that don't know, this is a 3D modeling program. It basically allows you to draw two-dimensional shapes and attribute real-life dimensions to them and then extrude them into the third dimension. So once a part is created here, then it can move on to the actual 3D printing. And for this to start, it's converted into a solid whose surface is completely comprised of triangles. So this surface may look completely smooth to you, but in reality, it's made up of a whole bunch of tiny triangles. And now, to actually show the 3D printing process, I'm going to set up my printer here. And the way it basically works is that it takes, takes that object and it splits it up into a whole bunch of layers of uniform width. And the printer, using a thin plastic filament, which is essentially a thin continuous rod, extrudes this plastic into the shape. So this was basically a simplification of the original problem. Because before, uh, any other way, you would have to make the 3D printer move in all three dimensions. But this essentially takes that problem and makes each layer a two-dimensional plane, almost like a two-dimensional printer. The only difference is that it's pushing out plastic, and once it's completed with one layer, it'll raise up a little bit, start the next one, and keep going up further and further and further until it creates the finished part. So why am I telling you any of this? And why are 3D printers important? Well, I'm not going to try and explain it to you. I'm going to try and show you. So look around you right now. Look at the people around you. Look at your peers. <laughs> All right? Do you notice anything? Everything around you could be found and bought at a department store. It's a weird statement, but it's true. Everything around you was made by somebody else and put in something like this, where you went and bought it. Right? Nothing you own was actually made in your home. And 3D printers could change all of that. And so I picked out just a couple of the really great innovations that people have been working on that really highlight, highlight how great this technology is. And the first one I have for you are 3D printed shoes. Now, I personally would really like to own a pair of these. I think I'd look great in them. <laughs> and, and this is really cool, because right now, if you're if you were to go to the shoe store and buy a new pair of shoes, you can only choose sizes in half an integer increments, right? So if you want to buy shoes, you can buy size six shoes, size six and a half shoes, or size seven shoes. If your foot is in between, then too bad. You've got to compromise. And it's the same thing with width. 
The width is fixed. You have to get the correct size width. Well, this could change all of that. Because with this, you can create, get the shoe that's exactly the size of your foot. For those of you who like instruments, this is a 3D printed guitar. So rather than have the entire thing be made out of wood, somebody could just run this body through a 3D printer and come out with this at the end. And they have this finished part that they can just assemble the rest of the guitar around and sell. And in fact, you can actually buy this. This is for sale. You can run out to the store and you can buy this right now. And, and also, one of the latest developments, a 3D printed car. And this was actually shown just a couple of weeks ago. And this thing actually works. This thing runs, this thing moves. And, and the craziest thing is that this isn't just a, some sort of silly prototype. Because, and finally, if none of these things interest you, there's 3D printed food as well. So this pizza was 3D printed. And it was actually made in a very similar technique that I explained earlier. Each part of this pizza was actually drawn out as a layer. So first it started with the dough, then it raised up and laid down the sauce. And it did this step by step until you got a completed pizza. And the thing is, this didn't come out of some crazy machine either. This came out of a machine that looked like this, right? This looks like something that could fit in in your home. And that was able to create that other thing. And ultimately, that's what's going to make 3D printers so important. Because they deal with all the physical objects around you, everything you interact with every single day, and everything you've been interacting with since you've been born, they can be adapted to be used for anything, which means they will be used for anything with given enough time. And the best part is that everything that's created is digital, right? Everything exists on the computer. So you can create one, and if you need another one, you can just print another one out. So for example, the 3D printed shoes. One day, you might not need to go to the store anymore to buy new shoes. You can just own the file of your favorite pair of shoes and just keep printing new ones out every single time you need one. So why am I so interested in 3D printing? Well, three and a half years ago, I got my first 3D printer. It's called the MakerBot Thingamatic, and it was one of the first consumer 3D printers that you could buy. It came as a kit, and it took 40 hours over the course of three days to assemble. Um, and it was a good printer. It was a great introduction to the subject, and I really liked using it. And I learned a lot from it. Um, but the problem was, it wasn't very good. There are a lot of problems with it, and as you can see, just the construction alone, it's, it's built out of wood. It was built more like a prototype than an actual finished product. Um, and for that reason, it had a lot of problems. Uh, and it ended up breaking, and now it's sitting in the corner uh, in my closet, actually, in pieces. Um, but that's OK, because two years later, I decided I wanted a new challenge. So I went and found RepRap. Now, RepRap is really cool, because Many of you may have heard of open source software, where somebody can write an application and release it to the public, but also release the code used to build that application. Well, RepRap works the same way, except it works, with the, it works with physical hardware. It's open source hardware. So people who created this 3D, these 3D printers took them and put the designs online, where anyone can reference them and anyone can see how they're built. But the best part is, because 3D printers create physical objects, and by their very definition, 3D printers are a physical object, you can use 3D printers to create new 3D printers. It's like printer reproduction, basically. So you can start with just the digital files. And you can actually just go on their website right now, and you can download these files. You can just download them, and you can print them out. And you can assemble these parts to create a new 3D printer. Well, so I was thinking to myself, I said, well, I have a 3D printer, and I have access to the internet, so I may as well try this out. So I went and found a design that I liked. And I took this design, and I decided I would build it, but as a challenge, I would also try and improve it. So I started at the first step. I downloaded the files, and I printed them out on my old machine. And then I decided I would take that wooden design, and I would make it better. 
I'd make it into the thing you see here today. So I refined it. I designed the entire frame out of acrylic and aluminum and high quality materials that would make it look like a household appliance that I'd be proud to present. And so, it took me the entire summer to assemble it, but I finally got it done right before the start of my junior year. It didn't quite work, it didn't quite work yet, but I knew it could get there. It had a ton of potential, and I spent a good chunk of my junior year working on it, but then when I got to this last summer, I decided I had to do something drastic to make sure it worked perfectly. I threw away a lot of the old parts, and I ended up overhauling this entire thing, um, changing a lot of things in the process, and that's actually why you can see it up here today with me, printing, because I'm so confident that it'll work. Um, and because, because it's kind of small down here, I actually have a video. Um, this is actually an 11 hour print of a vase uh, that I've condensed down to around 20 seconds. And it's actually really cool to watch. You can see how the layers work. It's like, it's like the print is essentially growing in front of your eyes. And the thing is, this is really cool. But it's not what interests me about 3D printers. It's really cool that you can make these kinds of objects, but it's not what they're good for. Because I thought when I first got my 3D printer, this was what was going to be cool about them. You could create these weird objects that nobody else had, and you could place them on your desk and you could show off, right? <laughs> but, but that's not what it is at all. Because really what it's about is creating functional objects that can make a difference. So a couple of years ago, I had this old film camera. And, and it broke down. And back then, uh, I didn't have 3D printers, and I had no hobby. Um, so I just had a dirty habit of taking anything I had apart. And so I picked this thing apart, and I found a whole bunch of lenses in it. And so I was playing around with these lenses, and one day, I held it up to my phone. And I found that one of these lenses magnified the image coming in through my camera. And it's this lens right here. So I found this lens, and I decided I would go ahead and see if I could make a part that would essentially combine my phone with the lens. So I did that. I created this in about an hour in a modeling software, and half an hour later, it was in my hands. And so I put it on my phone, and I decided to see if it would work. I went outside, and this is what you see normally through the camera, and this is what you can see through my lens. Now, it's a small example. And the reason why I showed you this, and the reason why I showed you the printer, isn't to make you think that I'm cool or accomplished. Uh, you know, because, because my mom thinks I'm cool, and my dad thinks I'm cool, and, and, and yeah. So, um, <laughs> and so, so really what this is about is I'm trying to show you what's possible. And I'm not that creative, and I'm not that intelligent either. But I was able to do these things, which means every single one of you, if you had access to a 3D printer, could do great things as well. And simply put, what it's allowed me to do is essentially view the world as Legos. Because before, everything were static objects that, that were just fixed in their final form when you bought them. You got them, you used them until they died, and you threw them away. But now, things aren't static anymore. You can take your printer, and you can combine objects to make something that's greater than the sum of its parts. And I know that somebody else will be able to do a far greater job with it than I did, and maybe even create something that could change the world. Now, I've been speaking for quite some time, uh, and, and I'm, I'm pretty thirsty right now. <laughs> Not that way. Um, <laughs> and so, so, I got this giant bottle of, of sparkling water right here. Um, but the problem is, I don't have a bottle opener on me. Um, I just can't find one anywhere on me. Uh, but thankfully, I happened to download one off the internet before coming up here today. So let's see if this works. Right? Never done this before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so 
Something that was on the internet just moments ago is now physical, in my hands. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of future that I want to live in. Thank you very much.